here way up in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas in a town called Eureka Springs which is noteworthy among fans of the paranormal for being home to the allegedly haunted Crescent Hotel. If you know me or you've been watching my channel for any length of time you know I'm a skeptic I've stayed at a few allegedly haunted places, but I've never seen any evidence of the supernatural myself. But I have a girlfriend who lives out here who swears she's seen unusual goings on here, and she begged me to come out and make a video. So, here I am. Like many historic buildings, this grand hotel has had many incarnations over the years. The Crescent was built way back in 1886 as a luxury resort for the one percenters of the Gilded Age. But for whatever reason, it ended up falling into disrepair and going out of business. Next, it reopened as an all-girls college, but that didn't last long either. But in 1937, it underwent its creepiest phase when a quack doctor named Norman Baker turned the place into a hospital and health resort. Baker, a millionaire inventor and radio personality, had no medical training, but he claimed to have discovered a cure for cancer. When he was run out of Iowa for practicing medicine without a license, he moved his cancer patients here to the Crescent, where he charged exorbitant fees for his cure, which basically just consisted of drinking the natural spring water in the area. And of course it didn't work, so many people died here. Finally, in 1940, the feds caught up with Baker and he was sent to prison and the Crescent was once again abandoned to slowly rot away in the forest. Over the years, this once grand hotel passed from owner to owner until finally, in 1997, this couple bought it and spent six years meticulously restoring it to its former glory. And now it's on the National Register of Historic Places. But it's probably best known for supposedly being haunted. Not only is this place supposedly haunted by various former cancer patients who died here under the dubious care of Norman Baker, it's also said to be haunted by the ghost of one of the girls who fell from a balcony when it was operating as a girls' school, and by one of the stonemasons who died during the original construction. Like I said, I'm a hardcore skeptic when it comes to anything paranormal, mostly because I've never seen anything for myself. But it's not for lack of trying. I've stayed at the supposedly haunted Mizba Hotel in Tonopah, Nevada, the equally creepy and also supposedly haunted Clown Motel across the street, the Amargosa Opera House in Death Valley, and I've poked around the Grand Hotel in Jerome, Arizona, which used to be an insane asylum and I've never experienced anything creepy or supernatural. But I'm open-minded. I can't say there aren't any ghosts just because I've never seen any. I'd love to be proven wrong, so much so that I drove all the way out here from Las Vegas and brought my Ouija board. <laughs> the plan is to stay here tonight and try to contact some spirits with the Ouija board. Right, Gina? Right. It's my girlfriend, Gina. She lives here in Arkansas, and she's the one who convinced me to come out here. Gina, you've stayed at this hotel before and had some pretty weird experiences, right? Stayed here one time. First of all, all of my pictures had orbs in them. Orbs? Yes, orbs. 
like the little floaty round orbs. Yikes! <laughs> and we took the nightly ghost tour. So there's like this kind of an older couple and we get to where one of the haunted rooms was. And so the tour guide is like telling us about the room and all of a sudden he's like, are you okay, sir? And this man is like all sick. And the wife was like, oh my gosh, this happened last time we took the tour. <laughs> like on the same floor, like in front of the same room. And we're like, uh -huh, I'm like nudging him. Wait, they took the tour before and he got sick and then they came back and took it again That's and he got sick I, in the same place? I was wondering, I was like, it's part of the act, you know. I, oh, I, like they were plants? Yeah, yeah. So I guess he got it together and, you know, we go downstairs and the tour's ending. But then all of a sudden he just passes out cold on the floor. And we're like, wow, like they're really doing this whole ghost tour up. Well, how do you know he really passed out? What if he was an act? Well, because the paramedics came and ambulance and Param lights. And, okay. Yeah, and they hauled him off to the hospital. So we're like, what the heck? Like, Okay, well, I'm open-minded, like I said. So I guess we'll just see what we turn up when we use the Ouija board tonight. <laughs> okay, here's the keys to the kingdom that will either prove or disprove the existence of the paranormal. Let's go find out. This is actually a really nice I think four or five star hotel. I mean, you can see they really restored everything to period detail. Really nice furniture. Even the fixtures are high class. The wallpaper, the drapes, lamps. Look at this, look at how cool this door is into the bathroom. The doorknob is right in the middle. I guess maybe that's how they used to do it back in the day. I mean, obviously the bathroom is updated, but it's hard to believe some poor cancer patient probably died in here. Okay, well, we'll do our little seance up here later, but let's go walk around the grounds first. Okay. Sarah, look, it's Morris's grave. Who's Morris? Morris was the manager of the Crescent Hotel. The manager of the hotel is, wait, it's a cat. It, he was a cat and he lived to be 21. See, May 1973 to October 1994. Whoa, that's a long time for a cat. But wait, the cat was the manager of a hotel? That's right. Well, this place is weird. <laughs> <laughs> I guess after Morris died, they missed having a cat around. So I guess their tradition is they always have a cat on the premises. And the current cat is this adorable little black and white one named Jasper who they feed and water. He has his own little food and water dish. Uh, his water dish is shaped like a ghost. And he has his own little cat door so he can come and go as he pleases. <laughs> hey, didn't, uh, didn't you tell me there was some breaking news development here? They found something creepy on the grounds? Yeah, so they found just recently um, where the doctor, Norman Baker, had uh, he had buried these jars and jars i don't know how many like several jars of like human specimens what and, yeah, what do you mean tissues. He barred, oh jars of human of like human organs i don't know if his organs it was like human like tumors and stuff that he would remove from people surgically <laughs> without a medical Wait. without a medical license so he removed tumors and buried put them in jars and buried them here on the ground yeah and they said it was very meticulous like they were all like lined up oh like, organized well yeah. wait so it's buried here somewhere can we go find where it's buried well, that's yeah i'd love to find it like we had to figure out where he would bury it though like, well if i was norman ba if i was a quack doctor and i was trying to bury a bunch of jars full of tumors hmm <laughs> i'm norman baker where did i put the tumors Where's the tumors, Norman? <laughs> okay, say you're coming down from the hotel and you're like, I'm gonna bury the tumors here, there, when I go right, when I go left. I don't know, but didn't you ask the waiter and he said it was back down here somewhere? I did ask the waiter and he was like, all oh, like, uh, you can't get to it. It's oh, he didn't, oh, they don't want us to know where the tumors are. Exactly. Let's find the tumors. <laughs> Next week on Tumor Hunters, Sarah Jane and Gina go looking for tumors in jars. Sarah Jane and Gina get kicked out of the Crescent Hotel. Oh, what about this little crescent trail? This looks like it goes down into the woods. Maybe that's the tumor trail. It's not a tumor. <laughs> we need to do a trail song. Trail? 
I like to go wandering upon the mountain track. I don't know that And song. when I do, I like to bring my knapsack on my back. Fallery hee, faller a ha, fallery hee, faller a ha ha ha. I don't know that song. I need one I know. <laughs> Walking down the tumor trail, the tumor trail, the tumor trail. <laughs> oh, look, maybe it's behind this creepy shed. <laughs> I don't know. It could be the tumor shed. Oh, look. <gasps> this is it. Look, 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 look. Notice security cameras in use. This oh area is gosh. under 24 hour surveillance. Anything removed from the site is theft. Prosecutors will be prosecuted. Violators will be prosecuted. This is it, dude. Look. Oh my god, you weren't kidding. Those are the bottles that had the tumors in them. Stop it. We found them. Holy cow. I honestly didn't think we would find this, but this is. I was kind of reading about it online. Like, they. I think some guy was doing gardening or something. And he kind of came up with a, a, a jar and it was like, what? Or a bottle. He found a bottle. And he was like, what's this? And they started digging. And look, I mean, look at this. This friggin' quack doctor buried all these bottles and jars full of. What did you say was in them? Tissue and stuff? Uh, t uh, human tissue and uh, organs and cancerous stuff. Shit. Oh my god, why though? I mean, I don't understand why he. Oh god, it's why just. Did he bury oh, it? smell it. Sick. Ooh, that smell. <laughs> wow, that is pretty gnarly. I mean, look at all those. You know how people collect those old glass bottles? I mean, the bottles themselves are probably worth money. Oh god. Well. What do you think? I'm freaked out. So now it makes sense. So he came down here, and then who knows what was here then, but then he thought that was a good spot. To oh, yeah, because look, like the hotel's up on the hill there. So back then, this would have been like, I mean, he didn't realize that nowadays they were going to have this uh, horseshoe court, and there's a chessboard, and a bunch of games, and a pool, and everything. They didn't have that all back then. So this was probably just a, a hillside, like where you could dump stuff, and he thought nobody would ever find it on the hillside. I wonder what the guy was doing, though, when he stumbled on the bottle. Man, I, I, I sure would like to talk to the guy who found that first bottle. Do you think that that shed they built is new? Like, yeah, I think they built that shed just to cover up the archeological site, to protect them when they're digging it out, because it takes them a long time to dig that stuff out. You know how they use a brush? You ever, have you ever seen those archeologists, how they do? With, they have like they, a toothbrush. They have to like very carefully, it takes forever to dig stuff out. I mean, I'm guessing they're treating this like an archeological site. Wow. I mean, think about it though. The people whose uh, body parts were in those jars, that was only in the 1930s. That was like 90 years ago. Their relatives are still alive. Like those are people's loved ones that are still alive. So they probably, I don't know if that's even considered a crime scene or what? Uh, Is this that, what's the statute of limitations on tumors? Well, okay, so you know, they're gonna show all the parts tomorrow night at seven. Here. What? Yeah, yeah. They're gonna show the parts yeah, they found? I just read it. Oh, yeah, we're so leaving tomorrow morning. We're gonna be gone. Yeah, oh, we're gonna be gone. I drove. 1400 friggin' miles out here and got here on the wrong day? So they're gonna put it all on exhibit. Okay, so this hotel definitely seems pretty creepy. And if there was any place that was haunted, this would probably be it. So let's get down to brass tacks and talk to some ghosts. Not only do we have our Ouija board set up and ready to go, but we're also wearing these purple scarves because apparently Dr. Norman Baker's favorite color was purple. He always wore, I guess, a white suit with a lavender shirt and a purple tie and even drove a purple car. Uh, so even though he didn't die at this hotel, he actually, he actually died of cirrhosis of the liver on a yacht in Miami in 1958. So his ghost, his ghost probably doesn't haunt this hotel, but I don't know, wearing purple might provoke the ghosts of some of his victims. Hopefully not. <laughs> Are there any ghosts in the room? Are there any spirits in the room? I don't know, it's not working because we don't have the right planchette because you lost it. <laughs> okay, you know how I said I drove out here and I, it was really hard to remember to pack everything. I, I tried to remember everything, but I forgot that it's called a planchette. It's a little <laughs> plastic thing that moves around on the letters. Well, I must have left it back in Vegas. And it's not like I can buy another planchette here in Eureka Springs. 
So I made one out of cardboard, and I thought I did a pretty good job on it freehand, but apparently the ghosts are too good to talk to us with this cardboard planchette. It's supposed to slide. Well, it could. They just, I don't know. Well, that was a bust. I'm a little relieved. <laughs> Uh, I brought this thing halfway across the dang country. Well, uh, we could just go for a walk outside in the dark and see if we see any ghosts. Sure. I'm in. <laughs> you don't seem too excited. I'm scared. <laughs> oh, Dad. I'm so sorry. I got us lost at the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs. Yeah. What was that? Well, that was fun. <laughs> so now we came here to the lounge to have a nightcap before we go up to our room. Hey, we finally found some spirits. <laughs> well, it's the next morning and our night at the Crescent Hotel was sadly uneventful. All we did was get a great night's sleep in a super comfortable bed at an amazing, beautiful, historic hotel. Gina, did you hear anything last night? Nope, did you? Just your snoring. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, guess I'll have to keep trying. On to the next allegedly haunted place. If you have any ideas, let me know.